Hi, it's Anita Thomas again for the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation presenting some videos about improvising on the clarinet and saxophone. In the first video we discussed finding your voice which is obviously something you need to do to figure out how to play in the jazz idiom and in this particular video we're going to talk about what to practice. Um, these things obviously all go hand in hand and they're for ever ongoing, <laughs> doesn't matter who you are, you continue to work on these things. What to practice? I'm going to include a few different things that are pretty crucial to being a, a good musician in general and then translating that into, into how that would work within a jazz framework. So one of the first things that you want to make sure you have control over is your tone. You want to have a good tone and your tone in many ways is your signature. If you have a recognizable tone for, for good qualities, you'll be instantly recognized. And of course, we find that when we listen to particular players, we can almost identify them immediately. I'm thinking of people like Lester Young or Coleman Hawkins on the saxophone, Benny Goodman on the clarinet. And of course, their tone was part of that, but so were the note choices that they had and the style, stylistic leanings that they had in their playing. But definitely uh, tone is a, is a big part of that. So we want to work on our tone, we want to work on our technique and facility, we also want to work on making sure we can play in tune. That's that These things are all very important to us and that we put it all together eventually. <laughs> so to work on your tone, we want to be able to play a full range of tone, of a good tone, a quality tone on your instrument um, at all sorts of dy different dynamic levels. So we do exercises to help ourselves understand what are the, the limits, how soft can we play, how loud can we play, and still generate a really good tone over the entire range of our instruments. And, and different parts of the range of your instrument require uh, you to do different things with your air and your embouchure. So one of the exercises that was taught to me by my classical teacher a long time ago was to start uh put on a metronome metronomes are really really useful in practice everybody should have a metronome and, and probably a tuner you can get these things on your uh, cell phone if you have a smart cell phone but you can also pick them up um individually i like to have i have metronomes everywhere around my practice room and tuners because sometimes i take them off to gigs and i don't want to ever be without one and plus i do have them also on my phone so this first exercise is really a control exercise of trying to get a really good tone when you're playing soft and when you're playing loud. So you do want to um, be able to figure out what is what are those limits? Like where can I play, how soft can I play before the, the tone actually stops and the instrument stops? So try and do these things. Try and play really, really soft without the metronome. Try and play really, really loud. And probably uh, if you live at home with your parents or brothers and sisters, uh, this will probably really annoy them, but do find the limits of your instrument to begin with. You want to know that. Um, and then you want to work on that. So I, I'm taking a metronome here and I'm, I'm actually putting the metronome all the way down to 60 beats per minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a note and I'm going to start uh, for one measure, for four beats, I'm going to crescendo. And then once the next measure starts, I'm going to decrescendo. And I'm going to try and do that evenly. And I'm going to try and retain my tone over that time. I haven't warmed up yet today, but... Here it goes. I hope uh, that it translates well over the, the video here. Quite slow. One, two, three, four. up a scale. different scales you maybe could pick a hard scale that you're uh, unfamiliar with and going at this slow tempo it'll it'll help you on that scale as well but the primary purpose of the exercise is to listen to your quality of tone I actually heard myself a little wavering my lips 
and the softer tone were probably not holding together as well as I would have liked them to. So you have to concentrate and, and think about all these things because the support that you give with your uh, your air, air is, is tone basically, and the support, then you need to hold that all together and make that reed vibrate uh, with your lips. So practicing this will help you develop your muscles, help you develop your air, and uh, it's a, a great tonal exercise. You can do another tonal exercise which incorporates tone at the beginning of the exercise, but also articulation, which is sort of a handy exercise to do because we need to have control not only over our tone, but also our articulation, our tonguing, our, our ability to tongue uh, rhythmically and rhythmically in time. And that's why we always want to use a metronome for these exercises and not just imagine the tempo in our heads um, because we might fool ourselves. Uh, the metronome is a, is a great uh, leveler for that. It will keep you honest. So I'm gonna leave the metronome at 60 and I'm gonna pick a, a different note to start on. And in this exercise, I'm gonna start with a whole note for measure, then two half notes, four quarter notes, eight eighth notes, 12 triplets, and 16 sixteenth notes, and then go back to my whole note. And of course, on that whole note, you really can listen to your tone and the half notes as well. Uh, when it gets faster, you wanna retain a good um, air, take a breath if you need to take a uh, breath, but try and also keep your rhythm and articulation clear and in time with the metronome. So here's uh, the metronome. I'm gonna play maybe on my F note, lower register. Picking a lower register, I'm worried about the higher registers creating sort of cut some cut off in the video. So here we go. Two, three, four. So as you can see, uh, I actually sped up on one of those 16th notes and I realized that I did and I have to practice that exercise, obviously. Um, this is the kind of uh, rhythmic practice actually that probably percussionists do all the time, which keeps them um, very even and regular with their playing. Now, the other things that you want to do for your articulation is we're doing that on one note, but you also want to practice scales and practice your articulation. But moving back to tone, so once we understand that we can create a really good quality tone, uh, then we can also incorporate these other things into our practice. We need to get our quality tone by air and support, but in this jazz idiom that we play, we're always looking for a particular sound because we like somebody. We like the tone of, it might be Eddie Miller on the tenor saxophone, or it might be Johnny Hodges on the alto saxophone, or it could be Johnny Dodds on the clarinet, um, or Don Murray on the clarinet. So make sure that if you uh, are working on your tone, work towards something, work towards a sound that you like, and maybe record yourself. You can do that on your phone. I know your, everybody's smartphone these days has a voice recorder. So record yourself um, and listen back and see if you're, you're getting close. See if you're creating the tone that you like that you want to imitate. Okay, so we touched on tone and now we're going to talk quickly about tuning. Although I could probably talk forever about all these topics. Um, make sure you have a tuner of some description. This will help you immeasurably. So uh, we want to be able to be reliable on our instruments, as you probably learnt that not all instruments are created equally and not all instruments are, are, are great uh, in tuning from one part of their range to another. 
So uh, saxophone being a ca case in point, saxophones tend to have some tuning issues in different uh, areas of the instrument. We have to learn how to play them in tune because if you're playing with a trumpet player, they might have different issues. So we all want to be able to play our own instruments in tune. So the, the thing that I would recommend is after you warm up and after maybe you do some tonal practice, that you just check in um, on, a on a tuner with one note and, and see if you're relatively in tune or pick an electronic instrument, a, a keyboard that will definitely be in tune and listen to whatever note that is. Let's say it's constant B flat. Listen to that note. Make sure your tuner is on, but don't look at it. Now try and play that note and match the tuning. Then look at your tuner and see where you are. See which way you skewed. See which way your brain had you go, the combination of your brain, your mind, what you're hearing, but also your lips and your air support. All these things will affect the tuning. So the more you work on this without immediately looking at the, tu the tuner as you play the note, uh, you'll start to learn your own, your instrument's differences and your own differences, which way you go with your tuning. Some of us like to play a little bit on the sharp side, so we need to try and bring that, rein that in. There's some notes on the saxophone that are incredibly sharp. My saxophone in the bottom plays very, very flat, so I have to make sure that I tune it in such a way that I can even out that it's not so flat on the bottom and not so sharp on the top, and I have to do the rest of the work here with my embouchure. So you work on your tuning, uh, these little micro movements with your embouchure, and that's how we work on our tuning. Okay, here's the part that I'm sure you all uh, have been expecting with what to practice, and that is your technique, your technical facility on your instrument, which is crucial to being able to play the ideas that you have uh, when you improvise. So you need it to be as immediate as possible. If you have an idea or a way you want a phrase to sound and you want to get it out on your instrument, you don't want to have any roadblocks because you haven't practiced in that key or your fingers get a little tied up. Particularly if something's moving at a fast tempo, we want to be able to get through and play our ideas as clearly as, as we can. And it's not to say that you won't make mistakes and that maybe you won't always get out the ideas that you have in your head, but the more technical facility you have on your instrument, the, the quicker that you'll be able to get to the ideas that you do have. So, um, your teacher probably has you practicing your scales up and down, hopefully with a metronome. Uh, the metronome will keep you honest as far as articulation and being rhythmic and staying in time. But I'm gonna suggest that you include uh, with your scale practice, practicing swung eighth notes, because that's probably how we're gonna play most of the music we play in, in our traditional jazz, and also playing over the entire range of our instrument, which means we're not gonna just play up and down a scale from bottom to top, because that means that when you're thinking about something and you, something's not coming to you, you're probably gonna then start on that root note and play bottom to top. It's gonna to become very boring to you. So you want to be able to twist and turn within the scale. So I'm gonna pick the scale of uh, G major for us, F concert, and I'm gonna put the metronome on. Not too fast, we don't want it too fast. Let's choose, let's go down to 90 here. Oh, 92, my metronome doesn't want to go to 90 for some reason. <laughs> but here's 92, and we're going to be in the key of G. Here's G major scale. So you have that in your head. And uh, we're going to play swung eighth notes at 92 all over the clarinet. One, two, three. To, to G because it felt good and that's where it wanted to be um, you would then increase the tempo so let's put this tempo up I usually say by two notches for at a time because you you don't want to uh, just rush forward you want to always feel comfortable and calm 
when you're playing these scales. You don't want to ever feel like your fingers are only just making it. You want to always feel like your fingers are moving slowly and smoothly. You want to keep your fingers as close to the keys as possible. Don't let them fly off. The, you know, if you keep them close, that's where you get your speed. If you let them fly off, you, you know, just you, you're bringing them back further. So try and concentrate on that. You can concentrate on that at a slower speed. It's a lot easier too. So I've, I've bumped it up just for this right now to 96. G, you can start on, I would pick a chordal tone, but as long as you just play one sharp, F sharp in there, then you know you're in the key of G. Um, we keep going up, we would go up a couple of notches, but let's say I've been spending some time on this and I've gone all the way up to uh, 138. All right, I'm probably going to make some mistakes at this tempo, and if I do, this is where I stop and I go backwards and try and iron them out and make them smoother, make those finger movements smoother and relaxed. All right, so maybe not. What if I just pick a harder scale to play? What about um, D flat? I'm not going to do it that fast though, I definitely will trip myself up. Ah, I just had a little blip in my scale. And there again, so I would pick out that part. I might even make the metronome slower so that I'm smooth at that section. in D flat. I'm having problems with it. So I need to slow that down. I need to smooth out my notes so that I don't stumble at these points. Um, and for now it sounds like scales, but the truth is all these notes in the scale belong within a key. And when we're playing songs, songs move through many different keys. And the more familiar we are with different keys, no matter how easy or difficult they are, if we have a familiarity with them and where we find the notes, not just the chord tones, but also the, the connecting notes, the passing tones, then we're going to have a, a better chance at getting those ideas out of our uh, mind through our instrument. So this is how you practice your scales. You can do arpeggios with a metronome in the same fashion, up and down, twist and turn, make them different. And uh, this will help you playing songs and improvising. Of course, we don't want to just be playing a bunch of scales. That's why you go back and try and transcribe music from your heroes. And maybe take a phrase that somebody you like plays. I'm just going to pick a phrase. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people have played this, but it's, you'll hear it. Okay, that's a, a phrase you've probably heard a million times in jazz. In fact, I think it was a, a song called Sister Sadie that has those sorts of notes in it. Take that phrase, play it in all 12 keys. Play it, start out slow and try and get the notes out, understand the intervals of the notes. One, flat three, major three, five, six, one. Uh, if you can find this in all 12 keys, then you're on your way to, to really hearing different intervals and breaking it down and then being able to play these things in your own improvisations. So you will find something that uh, one of your heroes plays and you go, I'm going to figure out what that is and what those notes are in that key and I'll practice it. I'll practice it fast. I'll practice it slow with the metronome to begin with and I'll put it in all 12 keys and I'll understand how it works rhythmically. So you know what beat it falls on. Make sure you play it rhythmically correct. 
Um, and these are all the things that you can practice to improve your technical ability on your clarinet or saxophone. I happen to have my clarinet here, so I've been using that, but uh, you must practice these things um, on all your instruments. So I hope this has helped you. I'm trying to think of other, there's so many things to practice. Don't discount using, in order to get to all 12 keys, the cycle of, I like the, to call it cycle of fourths because a lot of music will move in this fashion and resolve in this way. But however you think about it, practice all 12 keys, but this is a tool that you can use to make sure you hit some of those harder keys. Practice, I like to think about practicing scales in an easy key that makes us feel good and do well and then maybe a harder key so maybe pick two scales you might pick c major and you know i pick d flat major but it maybe it could be a flat something that has a little more sharps more flats something that might be trickier to you so uh, i hope this has helped you or will help you with your technical practice and i have some more information to come and thanks for listening